my name is Allison Dickin. I'm the VP of User Research at UserLeap, and today we're going to be talking about how to apply some of the principles of continuous research to uh, improving future adoption for your product. And we're going to be using an as an example, TripperCash, which is a person-to-person -person mobile payments platform that serves uh, consumers in Africa. So crypt, uh, Chipper Cash recently launched a cryptocurrency feature in, within their app, and they were seeing um, lower than desired adoption rates. And so they wanted to do some research to understand um, how they can improve adoption, specifically with users in Uganda. And so, you know, thinking about, you know, the overall adoption issue, we kind of broke it down into a couple of sub questions. First, are users even familiar with cryptocurrencies? Is this something that um, Shipper Cash's audience in Uganda uh, was interested in and open to? Um, were they aware that Shipper Cash had now started to offer cryptocurrency? Um, and then what's holding them back from trying it? So what we always like to do is when we think about a question of just why are people adopting it, how can we break that down into smaller questions based on the different hypotheses that you have? And um, depending on how big those smaller questions are, you might want to launch them just as, as one uh, microsurvey in the app, or you could launch them as separate kind of iterative microsurveys to understand um, and build on your knowledge as you start to answer some of these questions. So in the case of Chipper Cash, they actually launched it as one microsurvey. Chipper Cash, by the way, has amazing response rates from their uh, customer base. Um, they um, have a very engaged and active customer base, which is great. Um, you do, in general, by the way, see pretty good response rates um, uh, in micro survey, in product micro surveys in general, much, much higher than what you would see from an email survey. So, um, you know, typical response rates are at least 20 to 30% um, across, you know, particularly for SaaS products where customers generally tend to be pretty engaged. So, um, for this specific case, um, Chippercast uh, created questions to address all of those kind of sub questions that we talked about. So. The first question was, how familiar are you with cryptocurrencies? Is this something just to gauge interest, um, awareness, like, you know, what, what is the level of familiar, familiarity there? Um, the next question is awareness of Chipper Cash's new cryptocurrency invest feature. Um, so this is really important. A lot of times, you know, we start, we just kind of assume that if people aren't using a feature, they have considered it and decided not to use it. But often, they, they may just not know about it or they may not understand it. And so we're trying to address that with these two questions. Um, secondly, um, interest in, uh, next interest in learning more about that feature on Chipper Cash. And then, um, and that's only for people who are not aware. So if this is something that you're not aware of, is this something that you'd like to be aware of that you'd like to learn more about? And then finally, an open-ended question to help that uh, Chipper Cash understand more about what's holding people back. Um, so again, this is a longer survey because cheaper cash does have great response rates. Um, and so in those cases, you know, it's, it's fine to do that. Um, if you have a little more challenge with response rates, you might break this up into a couple different surveys um, that are just, you know, two questions each, for example. Um, so to give you a sense of the results that they saw from the survey, um, really were, were really telling. So first of all, there was low awareness of those features. So um, the majority of users in Uganda had not heard of these features. Um, and uh, they, you know that was a big deal in itself. Right away that tells you, okay, well, we need to be investing more in marketing, whether that's you know on social, um, through other channels, or just right within the product itself. Um, that's what we need to do if we want to increase adoption. Um, and then secondly, the lack of knowledge is a barrier. So looking at the open-ended responses, you can see that the most common theme that emerged from the open ends is that users don't have a lot of knowledge about crypto. And so this is not necessarily something that you could immediately address, but they did see um, through some of the other data not shown here that people were interested in learning more and were open to investing in crypto or purchasing crypto through Chipper Cash. And so knowing that knowledge is a barrier definitely gives um, Chipper some insight in terms of um, you know, whether they want to invest in educating customers about crypto and kind of helping them build that knowledge and to feel confident um, buying and selling crypto through Chipper. So as a result of these surveys, Chipper Cash it, it did kind of just the things that we we're talking about. So the first thing they did was in, increased uh, investment and awareness focused marketing in Uganda. Um, and that included advertising on social and in-app comms. So you can see some of the examples of those here. Um, and then they also are launching um, a crypto education initiative as kind of a secondary measure. 
which um, is, is just getting underway now, but is you know, definitely something that's important. And we see, you know, actually with a lot of apps that education is often a barrier and simple things that you can do to um, help users feel confident and feel ready to um, take the steps that you want them to take can be really valuable. And um, the results speak for themselves. It's really kind of incredible. And of course, the um, crypto market is, is pretty hot right now. So that, um, you know, that definitely doesn't hurt them. But you can see that from the time that they um, you know, ran the surveys to when they planned and launched their marketing efforts, um, the usage of crypto in Uganda went up by 194%. Um, so it's really incredible. And, you know, just based on some quick insights from a micro survey, you're able to um, understand, you know, exactly what's going on and, and where to take things. So, you know, how can you apply these results or sorry, these um, tactics on your own? So first, um, are you obtaining insights in context? So um, making sure that you're getting users when they're when they're in the moment, you know, when you're asking someone whether they might um, consider using crypto on Chipper, it's really important to be asking them in that in that moment as they're on, you know using the app rather than in out of context where the responses are less less likely to be less concrete and it's less likely to be kind of based in um, the actual experience. Um, or you know the other side of it is just not asking users at all with the analytics, which certainly don't give you insight. They're super valuable, but they don't give you insight into the why. Um, and then secondly, and I talked about this earlier, is are you considering where users are in the journey? So again, if we just assume people have chosen not to um, use the product, then we're kind of missing a lot of a lot of areas to explore here. So you always want to kind of think back: what are all the steps in the journey to um, try using a feature. So first you have to know it exists. Second of all, you have to kind of understand it, know what it's for, know how it might help you. And then you have to, um, you know, be able to assess whether it's right for you and then find out it's right for you and then you can use it. So there's actually quite a lot of steps that are in the journey to just simply using a feature. And um, those are things that you can um, consider when you're figuring out which, which are the right questions to ask um, users in a, in a micro survey. Um, and then finally, are you capturing data continuously? So um, this, you know, obviously that one that one off survey for Chipper gave them um, plenty of um, insight to act on and had a great effect. But, you know, as they start to roll out in other countries um, and start to ask other questions, um, you know, they are continuously and constantly asking their customers and their users about their experiences in the app um, on this and other topics. And that's the really um, the best way to just keep a pulse on your users and understand um, where they are now and where things are going and, and make sure that you're staying on top of it and building the features that um, they want and need. So um, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed this session.